Hey, I'm Tyler. In this lesson, we're going to look at extensive and intensive properties for the T's exam. But before we get started, I have some really important questions. Many people studying for the T's waste way too much time, okay? They don't have a study plan, they don't focus on the important things, and they end up getting really low scores, okay? I don't want to waste any of your time. So my questions to you are, is this video for you, and is it going to be worth it or a waste of time? Honestly, before you watch this video, you should make sure you are really, really good at the topics you see here. These topics always show up on the T's. So, stuff like atoms, states of matter, bonding, density, acids and bases. You will always, always, always get questions on these topics. So, make sure you're a total pro at this stuff. Then, after you've learned those topics really well, congratulations! you can move on to this. Learning about extensive and intensive properties is a really good way to push your score even higher. And that's because they sometimes show up on the T's, but they are really quick and easy to learn. This video is part of my T's Chemistry Essentials full course, and that course covers all of the important chemistry topics that you need to know for the T's. And I've put together the course in a way that doesn't waste any of your time, okay? If you don't have a lot of time to study, we lay out exactly what your highest priority should be and then what your medium and low priority should be so you know exactly what to spend time on. You can find that course at teasinone and if you have any questions or comments, send me an email, tyler at teasinone.com. Okay, let's get going. In the previous video, we looked at properties of substances and we saw how they can be divided into two categories. Okay, we've got chemical properties and we got physical properties. Now, chemical properties are about how substances change into something new during a chemical reaction. So, chemical properties are stuff like ethanol is flammable and iron rusts. On the other hand, physical properties don't involve changing in a chemical reaction. So there are things like iron is silver gray and water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. Now, there's another way that we can sort properties. We can divide them up into extensive properties or intensive properties. Extensive properties change depending on the amount of stuff you have. Here's what that means. An example of an extensive property is mass or how much something weighs. So one gold bar here weighs 12.4 kilograms. Three gold bars weigh 37.2 kilograms. So when you have more gold, the mass goes up and it changes. So the mass depends on the amount of stuff you have. So mass is a good example of an extensive property. It changes depending on the amount of stuff you have. On the other hand, an intensive property does not change depending on the amount of stuff you have. A great example of that is color. One gold bar is bright yellow. Three gold bars, also bright yellow. More gold, same color. Color doesn't change when you have more gold, which means that it is an intensive property. Okay, we're going to look at a few more examples and figure out whether they're extensive or intensive. And then we'll finish up with some T's practice problems. How about volume here? Would that be extensive or intensive? Well, volume is the amount of space that something takes up. Think about it. More liquid, the volume changes. It goes up. So volume is extensive changes depending on the amount of stuff that you have. How about freezing point? This is one that really trips people up and the T's loves it. Let's think this through. Let's say we have a glass of water. Well, it freezes at zero degrees Celsius. That's its freezing point. Now, let's say that we have a lot of water in a pond. It also freezes at zero degrees Celsius. That's its freezing point, zero degrees Celsius. So, more water, same freezing point, zero degrees. But the reason why this confuses people 
is that the pond may take longer to freeze. It may take weeks to freeze. The glass of water might just freeze in an hour if you put it in the freezer. But the point is, both the glass of water and the pond freeze at zero degrees. So freezing point doesn't change depending on the amount of water. So it is an intensive property. Here's some common examples of these two categories of properties. The two big extensive properties to know are mass and volume. And some common intensive properties are stuff like color, odor, and temperatures for phase changes, like melting point, freezing point, and so on. And there's one more intensive property to mention that often shows up on the T's, and that is density. The density of a substance doesn't change when you have more or less. Here, we have four objects made of lead. They all have different sizes, and they all have the same density, 11.3 grams per cubic centimeter. Density is an intensive property. So we'll add density here to our list of common intensive properties. Finally, if you're having some trouble remembering the difference between extensive and intensive properties, here's a trick that has really helped me. Remember that extra stuff will change an extensive property. And on the other hand, an intensive property is independent of the amount of stuff that you have. It's a great little trick to remember these things. Okay, let's finish up with a couple tease questions. Here we go. If an intensive property is independent of the amount of material being measured, which of the following is not an example of an intensive property? Sometimes the T's is going to help you out. And right here, they defined intensive property. They told you what it meant. But don't rely on that. It won't always do it. Okay, let's look at these choices. Choice A is specific heat. Okay. Let's say you have no idea what specific heat is. We'll put a question mark here, and we'll come back. Choice B says density. Remember, we said that density is a very common intensive property. We are looking for the choice that is not an intensive property. Cross it off. Choice C is melting point. Remember that all phase change points are intensive properties. A glass of water melts at 0 degrees Celsius. A pond of water also melts at zero degrees Celsius. It doesn't matter how much you have. Water always melts at the same temperature. So this is intensive cross off. Finally, choice D, mass. Well, mass, how much something weighs, definitely depends on the amount of stuff you have. Extra stuff makes the mass go up. That means we're dealing with an extensive property. And that means that D is our correct answer. But before we finish, let's go back here to choice A. You probably had no idea what specific heat is, and that's okay. The T's will often put down answer choices that you've never seen. And I always say, focus on what you know. We knew that mass was an extensive property. We knew it right away. So we can safely choose that and cross off the stuff that we don't know. Stick to what you know. Here's another example. A sample of mercury has a mass of 150 grams and a volume of 11.1 .1 cubic centimeters. All the following true statements are intensive properties except for which one? Okay. First off, remember, an intensive property doesn't depend on the amount of something that you have. First choice is pretty easy. Mercury has a silver color. Color is intensive. It definitely doesn't change depending on how much you have. Mercury has a silver color no matter what. Cross it off. B, the sample has a density of a lot. Uh, stop right there. Density, very common, intensive property. Always has a density of 13.5 grams per centimeter cubed. Cross it off. Okay, choice C, the mercury has a volume of 11.3 cubic centimeters. Okay, is volume an intensive property? Well, what is volume? It's the amount of space that something takes up. So volume is always extensive. It definitely depends 
on the amount that you have. So this is very likely our correct answer. Let's put a check mark here and move on to D for just to be sure. The boiling point of mercury is 356.7 degrees. Okay, state change temperatures, boiling point, melting point, freezing point are always intensive. Mercury boils at this temperature no matter how much you have. So cross it off. Choice D is not the right answer, but choice C is. Volume is an extensive property. Okay, last one. All the following are true about a sample of water. Which one describes an intensive physical property? Before we look them over, let's make sure that we know what we're looking for here. Okay, the question wants us to find an intensive physical property. So a physical property doesn't involve a chemical reaction that makes something new, and an intensive property doesn't depend on the amount of stuff that you have. Okay, let's look these over. Choice A, the sample can be converted, I'm sorry, the sample may be converted to hydrogen and oxygen gas during electrolysis. Now, this may not use the word react, but it's pretty clearly a chemical reaction. You're doing something to water, doing electrolysis and getting new substances, hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. That's a chemical reaction, so this is a chemical property, not a physical property. Cross it off. Choice B, the sample has a mass of 125 grams. That's definitely a physical property. You're not making anything in a chemical reaction here. So think about it. Is it extensive or intensive? The more water you have, the more mass. Mass is extensive. It depends on the amount. Cross it off. Choice C, the sample has a volume. This is a lot like choice B. The more water, the higher the volume. Volume is extensive. Cross it off. And that leaves us with choice D. The sample has a freezing point of zero degrees Celsius. Freezing point is a physical property. And as I always say, a glass of water freezes at zero degrees Celsius. A pond of water freezes at zero degrees Celsius. It doesn't depend on the amount. It is an intensive property. So D here is the right answer. Okay, well, that is what you need to know about extensive and intensive properties for the T's. If this video was helpful, if you felt yourself actually learning, you can find my full course at teasinone.day.com. I teach slowly and patiently. And I tell you exactly what your study priorities should be. And if you have any questions about the T's, send them my way. Tyler at teasinone.day.com. I always like to help. Best of luck with the T's.